Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to another edition of Hilal Live. My name is Lukman Shadrach, all the way from the Cape Town studios. Uh, shukran so much for joining us uh, on Channel 347 on DSTV, also on our live stream www.hilal.tv. It's Wednesday and as we do on a Wednesday, we continue with our Soul Series with our guest Fadwa Bouli. Assalamu alaikum. alaikum. Ah. Jazakallah so much for coming into the studio. We've had a, a couple of interesting chats over the last couple of weeks. We are opening up the WhatsApp line again, uh, 079-085-2511. Only WhatsApps on that number, uh, 079-085-2511. Let us know uh, any uh, questions, queries, comments you may have towards Fadwa. Today's topic that we discuss in Fadwa is cravings of the body. Now, um, When we think about cravings, we try and analyze it. We try and find out where the source comes from. Some are habitual, some are, some are uh, designed to attack our bodies and minds in different ways as well. And I suppose in, in some instances can be borderline addiction in certain ways. So where do these cravings come from? So have you heard that the gut is the second brain? Yes, right. I, I think, yeah, I follow my gut. Yeah, follow my gut, right. So what, 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 we, what do we fill the gut with? Um, food, and, um, you know, anxiety in, <laughs> in some instances as well, uh, or just, you know, the, the gut controls how the rest of the body works. Exactly. So the mind-body connection, hmm. right? So what, what happens in the mind, what we sometimes do is when we go through anxiety, because if we're going through anxiety, we are, we are placed in the future, mm -hmm. the future pacing. We right. think of all the scenarios, what could happen, what's going to happen, what we should try and prevent, what we should try and control. And then what happens is the gut becomes hungry. Mm. And in that time, we need to regulate the nervous system. So right. we need to feel our bodies want to calm down because okay. it's like the homeostasis of the body. It needs to calm us down. So what happens is we're looking for the thing that's going to calm us down. So when you look at the cravings and addictions, what's going to calm us down? Mm. What's going to make us feel calm? What's going to make us feel better? So when the client walks into my room, I met yesterday I had a very interesting um, dear client of mine. She came and she was craving... Um, Kit Kat. Okay. And then I said, okay, look, let's break it down. I said, the wafer means you are going through some stress or anxiety because you're wanting to chew. And the chocolate is comfort and then it clicked. She mm -hmm. said, that's exactly what I've been feeling. Right. So chocolate on its whole and sugars, it's the comfort that you're feeling because it makes us feel good. Okay. So sugar is more addictive than heroin. Mm. There were studies wow. done, right? The way the brain lights up when you have sugar in the body, it lights up much higher and brighter than when a when you have a shot of heroin. Right. So you can imagine how addictive sugar is. Now, if you look at chocolate, it's the childhood comfort mm. because chocolate reminds you of childhood and it's comforting. Right. So when people want plain chocolate, they say, just, I just want dairy milk chocolate or plain praline chocolate or something, mm. then I know they're just looking for comfort and they're wanting to look for childhood comfort. And it usually relates to who gave them that chocolate in childhood. Mm. Could be the mother, could be the grandmother who used to spoil them with chocolates. Now I'll ask them, what's your favorite? So when they tell me chocolate, I said, what's your favorite chocolate? And I'll break it down for them. So now someone tell me nuts, whole nut chocolate. Then I say, okay, what frustration are you going through? How do you know it's frustrated? Mm -hmm. Because you need to bite on your molars to crunch down the nuts. Right. So it's hardness. You're crunching down the nuts. Mm -hmm. And now it's, I'm getting rid of the frustration and the anxiety maybe. But I'm also getting the form of comfort, mm -hmm. which is taking me back to childhood. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, it's amazing how that food combination can really put you in a whole different space. Uh, for example, they say when you go shopping, you know, yes. eat before you go shopping because yes. then you're going to fill your trolley up <laughs> uh, and all of them. And that's where that gut connection to your mind comes from. Tiredness. Mm -hmm. um, we know you're tired when you're shopping maybe after work and now you're hungry mm -hmm. and you're walking down the aisles. That's then why you become hangry. Hangry, yes, right? Um, now you're walking down the aisles, they, strate they strategically place the, mm -hmm. the, all the luxuries right by the top because the as aisle. you're waiting, You're going to take that and you're going to nibble on that. So um, that's how they strategically do it. That's why you say keep a bottle of water with you and have an apple in your car so right. that you, you try, especially when you're going on a health journey and you say, mm -hmm. okay, I don't want to eat all the junk anymore to get off the sugars. Mm -hmm. So the other cravings is when they say um, something like, I just want the rice food, rice mm -hmm. and potatoes and the vegetables or the curries or the briyanis and the acnes. It's because it reminds them of that home comfort when grandma used to look mm -hmm. after them when they come home from school. Mm -hmm. Very you know? true. So and, true. And then the different types of, so when clients are also looking at uh, chocolate, I'll say, have you tested your magnesium lately? When last did we take calcium and magnesium? Because magnesium directly linked to chocolate cravings. 
Mm. And if you look at children, babies, have you noticed that some of them will scratch and pluck plants and they'll eat the sand because their bodies are lacking some minerals that you find in the soil, Crucial. vitamin Bs. So babies instinctively know they'll get the vitamin Bs from the soil because I always used to find my nephew by the pot plant and he should mm. eat the soil. <laughs> and I'm like, don't eat that stuff because your body is lacking something. Mm. And instinctively we know where to find it. Mm. So the different foods we eat, it will relate to different cravings because your body will crave it and will eat it because we need to regulate the nervous system. Mm. We need to find that comfort and it all links. Mm. And then of course the overgrowth of parasites happen in the body where the gut starts getting bigger. <laughs> So then it looks like the yeast belly. Yeah. And that happens sometimes when there's too much parasites in the body and sometimes small parasites and they're known as the SIBO, which is overgrowth of um, small intestine microbes, okay. right? right? Bacteria overgrowth. Right. So when they come for a kinesiology session, I first check all that to see if there's candida in the body, if there is stuff like SIBO, if there's overgrowth of, because when you're eating wheat, mm -hmm. right, that's why a lot of people are gluten intolerant. When you're eating the wheat, the dairy, they're getting all the parasites from that product that they're eating. Yeah. And when there's an overgrowth and yeast comes in, it's your athlete's foot, it's your belly that swells up, it's your brain fog. It's a whole combination of things from acne to um, psoriasis to eczemas to even asthmas because of all the gut stuff that's happening in the body. So when I look at the cravings, the person, what are you craving? automatically there's one person that came in and they said um, I picked up they needed a good metal cleanse mm -hmm. and mercury came up and then I said are you eating wine gums he said how did you know because mm -hmm. in wine gums a lot of mercury wow yes and then he was like blown out of the water how do you know he's eating wine gums he said he'll keep a packet in his car and a packet in his briefcase that because he was just eating wine gums sure. so because of that it was the mercury in the body so uh, if I look at what type of metal cleanse you need, because what they did now recently with kids with hyperactiveness and even autism and the mothers in the States were doing a metal and a parasite cleanse on their bodies, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a detox, and the kids were turning out normal. So the parasites were attached to the metals. So now I know it's like a lot of metals in our body and our waters is aluminium. There's a lot of things in our toothpaste, yeah. they, in our salts and stuff as well. But do you find that, um, and I, I would imagine that uh, this is part of your research as well, that the foods that are made now, mm -hmm. um, you know, attack the body very differently. Yes. And are designed to attack the, the body very differently compared to when we grew up and the wholesome foods that we were eating then as well. Do you find that clients tend to have a very different pattern now according to the food they, they put into their body? Yes, because now everything is easy and cheap. Mm. So I say you are what you eat, or True. you fast and cheap. True. <laughs> you True. know what I mean? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> right? So the fast foods, it's like on every corner, there's a McDonald's, there's mm. a Burger King, there's different types of food that's easy accessible. Mm. So in our lifestyle that we do, mothers are busy. They pick up the kids from school, a school yeah. drop-up, they need to go to madrasa, they need to do certain activities, extramurals, and not always do we have the time to prep. So it's like, mm -hmm. okay, let's just go to the drive through quickly. So in the drive through what I've discovered is how do the worms get inside the body? The drive through not always do they wash the lettuce properly. So the worms mm -hmm. can be in the lettuce, the eggs can be in that, and that's how so we get true. it in the body. That's also of true. Of course, a lot of people, only with COVID, they were like washing their hands. Some people working with their food, we don't know if they're washing their hands. I've seen people working in the restaurants, going to the toilet, not just washing their hands and going back into the kitchen. So we don't know that gene um, processes, of right? Course. And then, of course, so going back into time, our grandmothers, our parents were cooking wholesome foods. What were they doing? There wasn't a lot of takeaways options mm. back in the day. I mean, Sundays, the, the whole world used to be closed on a Sunday and we had to watch um, SABC church stuff on, yeah, a, on yeah, the TV. For sure. And we used to bake bread on a Sunday. And it reminded me very much of COVID when it happened, of mm. lockdown. We went back to those basics where we actually started feeling healthier because we couldn't access all the fast foods. Of course. Now to the wholesome foods that we were eating, the vegetables. And then back then, the food was also much cheaper. I mean, che fish was the cheapest meal. Of course, Fish yes. today is the most expensive meal. It's much more expensive than meat and chicken. Absolutely. So that, we used to eat fish sometimes twice a week. Mm. Um, the process is how our grandmother used to make it was the steamed vegetables and the cooked foods. And we had mm. a lot of vegetables. We had a lot of legumes and rice. Now it's burgers. Now mm. it's quickly mm. processed foods. So yeah. the processed foods is doing a havoc on our body mm. and when you want to get healthy and any health um, if you look at banting you look at anything that they do is they say stay away from processed foods and eat all your whole foods so it's your greens it's your vegetables it's um, organic chicken they'll direct you to organic chicken so that there's no antibiotics and stuff in the product right and of course um, 
it's a big difference on the body. They say stay away from dairy. Mm -hmm. If you look at Dr. Sebi, his diet, stay away from dairy, mm -hmm. any mucus causing foods and fruits, right? And then dairy, as uh, was dairy, it was um, processed foods. And all you need to do is eat wholesome fruit and vegetables and your protein. Okay. And people were healing. They were healing their guts. They were healing their minds. They were healing everything. There's so much merit in some of the research that's been done yeah. and the analysis. Sometimes people say, look, you know, they're overthinking and, and maybe they are putting too much information for you to gather and, mm -hmm. and utilize. However, some of the research is just spot on as well. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a short ad break. When we come back, we chat in a bit more to Fadwa Bouli. Do join us on the WhatsApp line 079-085-2511. Let us know your thoughts about today's topic and be part of the conversation. You are still watching Hilal Live. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Hilal Live. Thanks for joining us on Channel 347. Remember the WhatsApp line's open. If you'd like to correspond with us, 079 085 Double one. Uh, you let us. You're welcome to let us know about your comments, questions, queries. We've got Fadwa back in studio, chatting to us about the com uh, the combination between one's cravings and how it affects the mind and the body at the same time as well. Fadwa, Jazakallah so much for coming into studio once again. Before the break, you chatted about a very interesting man called Dr. Sebi. Yes. Uh, he's done quite a bit of research. He's done quite a bit of analytical data with regards to how the body functions and how the different types of food affects the way we operate yes. in our everyday life. Chat to us a little more about that. So, I'm so I was so fascinated with this Dr. Sebi. I discovered him a few years ago and his main aim was he had this retreat in the US. Mm -hmm. He's a man from Africa and um, he, he came over to America and he had his own range of natural products, okay. like herbal products. And he's be very big on Irish sea moss. Oh, you're it, right. It, yeah, yeah. It contains like I had 92. somebody in the studio not too long ago yeah. uh, doing the whole sea moss thing, and yes. she's wonderful. Yeah, so 92% of all the minerals that our body needs, the, that sea moss contains it. Mm -hmm. And he was explaining that anything... Um, that causes mucus in the body and inflammation is the root of the illness. Mm -hmm. So he has healed many people from autoimmune diseases, from arthritis, from even from uh, HIV mm -hmm. and cancers and wow. yeah. So obviously they wanted to get rid of him. Mm -hmm. so I won't go down that route. But when I researched anything that's mucus causing, mm -hmm. he will tell you get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And he was 85 years old at the time and he was still doing lectures and he would drop down on his knees and we tell him, look how strong his knees are because of the mineral that he ate. Mm. He was very big on black seed. Right. Just very okay. black on black seed. Which is and widely the, spoken about in our culture. Absolutely. And um, black, um, big on black seed and then on the sea moss. So now you look at anything, because um, I, I do extensive research, especially when I studied nutrition. Mm -hmm. Ten, intensive research is that a dairy is not good for a lot of our babies, okay. right? Uh, cow products, because if you look at the lactose intolerance, that our, because our bodies are not meant to metabolize. And babies haven't formed their yes. genetic structure yes. uh, fully. And there's as also well. such a lot of antibiotics in the product that they, mm. the cows and stuff. And then he says, cut out the dairy. Now, mucus, dairy is mucus causing, right? right? The other thing he said, cut out the wheat. Okay. Right, and that causes a lot of havoc inside the body, especially gut issues, especially like yeast infections and things. And then the other one that he said he cut out is just sugar. Okay. So if you look at sugar, sugar is so addictive. It's in everything. Mm. If something is on the, there was one um, nutritionist I followed, she said if it's in a box, you don't eat it. If mm. you buy it in an aisle, you don't eat it. Do everything fresh. So, so you look at paleo, it's fresh. Mm. You look at... Mm. Um, What's the same as about banting? Yes. Keto is all fresh stuff. So yes. there's nothing in boxes and things because of all the preservatives in the product. Mm -hmm. And the, it's all the preservatives causes a lot of havoc. Mm. So there's something that I've learned from Dr. I mean, from Marissa Pierce. She said, you the three R's you follow. If you can recognize what's in the product, right. if you can reconstruct it, and if it rots, if it roams, if four, four R's. If it rots, if it roams, if you can reconstruct it, and if you can recognize, right. then you eat it. Okay. Because if it's not roaming, don't eat it. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't, so you look at your cows, your chickens, your, mm -hmm. if it's not roaming, don't eat it. If it doesn't rot. There was a study that um, they did a Ma McDonald burger. Mm -hmm. They left it out for an hour long and it's still in the same position. No mold or nothing. Wow. Didn't rot. Okay. So don't put that stuff in your body. No, don't absolutely. Give it to your kids either. 100%. You know? Um, you know, the strange part is that um, if you look at all of the organic food though, 
Mm. It's a lot more expensive. It's much more expensive. Than, you know, food that we, quick food that you were talking about, quick fast food yes. that you were talking about. <laughs> um, it's a lot more expensive. Yes. Uh, for me, it should be cheaper because if you're encouraging people to be a lot healthier uh, or eat healthier, then, you know, lower the price of it. They won't mm. because health is expensive. Yeah, Why? Yeah, because they yeah. want us sick so that we can be dependent on medication. True. Also true. Let's so, not go down that road. No, go down uh, that. We're going to open up a whole <laughs> new bag of worms uh, if, we, if we're going to do that one as well. However, cravings can come from a very emotional, uh, biological or genetic um, urge. Yes. And obviously, nutritional deficiencies or belief systems mm. are passed down from generation to generation. I would imagine that's all linked. It's all linked. So if you look at, if you have candida in the body, what mm. do we crave? We crave sugars. We crave vinegars. We crave anything that ferments, so cheeses. So when mm. somebody has candida, then I'll say, so when your family loves cheese, my mom mm -mm -mm. and my dad and my grandmother, we can live on cheese. Mm. That's because it's now the genetics. So yeah. we get the genetic downline. And then, of course, um, anything, like I said, fermentation. So mm. if you look at our Indian culture, Malay culture, what do we like adding to our dishes when we eat? We like our achas. True. It's our vinegars, it's our oils, it's, it's fermentation, mm. right? Mm. And then, of course... Um, I know when I'm stressed, what do I look for? I look for boar. Oh, you know, my word. You know that boar. It's taking me back now, ages. <laughs> you know what I mean? It yeah. sounds like you want that vinegar hit because when you're in stress mode, so if when I do workshops with somebody and I have packets of sour worms, so when I see them freezing and then I have to give them sour worms to eat or suck on a lemon mm -hmm. because take them out of the flight fright response. Right. So what happens is I used to look for that or China fruit because it is to calm my nervous system. I'm eating something. You're making me salivate on, you know on studio. I mean? yeah. so, uh, so look at that. You listen to it and your body's mm -hmm. salivating because why? It's You take it back to a childhood memory. It's taking mm. you back to comfort. It's taking you back to feeling good, mm. feeling better. Do we often ignore that that uh, connection or do we find we give into it a bit more often? We give into it more often because things are much more readily available. Mm. At every spa now you find Bora and China for the ride by the of toes. Course, Before yeah. we had to wait for somebody to go to Durban or to Joburg to bring us or up. some auntie that's <laughs> going to make it. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? So yes, it's become more available and now it's like everything is so immediate gratification. We want mm. something, we can pick up Mr. Delivery, we can pick up the phone. It's not as before. Mm. So that's why the illnesses has increased, the obesity has increased. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of links to a lot of things and especially yeah. emotions. Yeah. So when we're looking at emotions, all we need to do is find ways to regulate that nervous system, find ways to get your vagus nerve regulated mm -hmm. because we're storing all our emotions in our vagus nerve. Yes. So you chatted about some of the cravings earlier mm -hmm. as well. You you touched on very briefly on some of the foods. Yes. Sugar does a certain thing. Uh, caffeine does a certain mm -hmm. thing. Maybe could you elaborate for our viewers a bit more in terms of what the body goes through yes. uh, when we crave these okay. certain things? So if it's an addiction cycle, the first thing we're going to do is we need adrenaline. Mm -hmm. What do people need first thing in the morning? Coffee. I need my coffee. coffee. What does caffeine do? Right. Adrenaline. Right, it's going to impact the kidneys immediately. So that's why when you've got kidney stuff, I tell them, please stay away from the coffee, reduce it, or do decaf. Okay. Now, people the people their faces Oof. for decaf. Yeah, I know. After I that, decaf. After that, then the serotonin and the dopamine is going to hit because you've got that coffee yeah. and you've got your hormones going. Right. After the serotonin, what's going to hit? Sugar. Your sugar craving, I would imagine. No, no, the sugar is part of the serotonin. Oh, okay, hit. all right, okay. It's going to be histamine. Okay. Now the histamine comes so in. Now, true, yeah. Yes, and now it's like the sniffles in the nose and now the inflammation starts happening. I'm so allergic to caffeine that if I take it, I can actually feel how my brain, something mm -hmm. happens in my brain, like I just feel it constricts. Wow. I get migraine if I have caffeine. Wow. So I can't have coffee now. Well, uh, that is a contributor, contributing factor to migraines. Yes. Uh, dairy products, fish, cheeses, Cheese, all of that, yeah. Anything with a C. So I used to watch it and see curries. Okay. So when my, uh, my body's stressed out, I had to stay away from curries, coffee, chocolate. So things with the sea. Interesting. And, you know, so I know that I it would eat me. And mm. one day I was actually running a race and I drank a goo, which was pure glucose, mm -hmm. and it had um, the cappuccino flavor. So there was caffeine in there and Oof. coffee flavor. And I promise you I had to stand still because I could feel it in my body, how my entire body reacted to it. I could actually feel how it went mm -hmm. because I'm already sensitive. And I just stood still. And I thought, okay, it's going to mm. kick now. And mm. But I didn't feel good. I just didn't because oh, I could that, feel that, that inflammation. I, 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 you know, I had a um, dose of migraines early on. It was so now and then it comes mm. back, but it's not a nice feeling. Not and your nice body feeling. goes through a very, uh, you know, weird process as well. What are some of the other foods that contribute towards how your body-mind reacts? Okay, so anything that you're allergic to, you'll be craving it. Oh. Yeah. 
Interesting. So if it's not good for your body, you'll be craving it. Mm-hmm. And then afterwards, you'll get that heat. And then you'll go through the whole addiction cycle. Then the histamine comes because now there's inflammation in the body. And the body needs to calm down the inflammation. And then you'll feel the sinusitis mm-hmm. in the body. You'll feel sometimes the joint. So uh, especially with gout attacks, mm-hmm. with arthritis mm-hmm. attacks. Mm-hmm. I've they'll heard feel that. that pain in the body because they ate something that they... So um, they used to say, if I eat cream and then I don't feel good, I'm going to get a headache. If I eat um, cocoa, chocolate, that was me. I can actually feel it. Caffeine as well. So even if I smell coffee, I can actually feel my body just changes. Like, you know, so once we become more aware, you can only heal something once you understand. Of course. Once you understand your body and understand your cravings, you will be more mindful of it. Because when you're growing and um, growing in awareness, your awareness is your growth, actually. Right, right. I get you. Some of the other foods, uh, I know a lot of the times we like our fast foods, yes. which can be quite greasy yes. at times. So the greasiness, why do we eat the grease? It's because we want to feel full. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling, um, how can I say? Yeah, I need to I've feel. Yeah, yeah, I need to feel full. So when they do the fats first, they say in the high fat diet, you will lose more weight because mm. it's not the sh- fat that makes you fat; it's mm. the sugar that makes mm-hmm. you fat. Mm-hmm. So when you're eating healthy fats like your olive oils and all those things, it will fill you up. So you're not feeling you need to eat more food, right? So there was one client of mine that just wanted to eat hot chips. He ate hot chips every single day. Wow. His cortisol hormone was so high, and I pointed it out. And he would show me that um, he said every single day he needed like to eat that hot soaked chips, like mm. the fisheries type of chips, because that's also comforting. Mm-hmm. It filled him up. Mm. There was another client that needed to eat burgers every day. So if you look at obesity and you research um, and you see what's the type of foods that they're eating, they're needing something to feel full. If you look at a diabetic person, lack of sweetness in their life, yeah. pancreas. Mm. So when you look at the metaphors of the body, you'll quickly understand someone. So when someone comes to me like maybe with a bladder infection, mm-hmm. right? Then I'll ask them, okay, so why are you pissed off? Sorry for my language. Right. They will laugh. And then they'll say, oh, I've got a, a piles or something, hemorrhoids. Mm-hmm. And then I'll tell them, why are you hot for? Mm-hmm. You know, then we'll have a good laugh about it. But automatically they'll link it and say, and you know, the verbal diarrhea starts. Of course. So, yeah. so we're going to leave it there, unfortunately. Okay. We've run out of time. Jazakallah so much once again Jazakallah. for being very informative about, uh, you know, stuff that we can control. Yes. Because we can. You know, if we just, you know, put our put our mind to it as well. Have a wonderful evening. Salam alaikum. And that's the Soul Series uh, on a Wednesday. After the break, uh, it's the turn of Yusuf Khan Dalwai. You are still watching Hilal Live.